Welcome to the CMO Spotlight. And I'm so excited today to talk to Matt Preshern, who is the Chief Marketing and Demand Generation Officer for NTT. Thanks for joining me, Matt. Oh, thank you, Joe. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Absolutely. Well, I wonder if we could just begin by your telling us more about NTT, because NTT is a, I think, $27 billion giant company, but uh, I don't know that everybody, it's not a household name to everybody that, that in our audience. So I wonder if you could just tell us more about NTT as an organization. Yeah, absolutely. And um, interestingly enough, if you take the call it the global company for NTT. It's actually a company that's over $100 billion, based out of Japan, over 100 wow. years old, wow. and is probably, you know, if you think historically, probably comparable to the AT&Ts of the world in this part of the world, right? Or um, And the, the part of the company that I work for, Entity Limited, that's going to be part of Entity Limited and Entity Data, we are roughly a close to $30 billion company. Wow. And of which 10 billion plus is in, in, in Japan itself. And then we're combining the limited side plus the data side. And for those of you who are in technology and you think of the technology stack, um, we, we aspire to be, uh, you know, one of the leading companies in the end to end stack. So what does that mean? We actually have, very strong networking business. We are also one of the largest marine cable providers in the world. Wow. We're probably number two or three in the world in our data centers. Very strong cloud presence. And then as we go up the stack, we are in the application space, industry verticals, and uh, probably, I think, depending on which rankings you look like, we're within the top 10. Some may, six, may say we're number six or seven of the uh, you know highly ranked brands in the world with uh, an, an aspiration to be, I would say, a socially responsible, sustainably, you know, sustainability is very important, but also to be a leading tech company end to end. Wow. So super exciting well, to be part of it. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, I misspoke and said 27 billion. It turns out I, I undercut the value of NTT by you know, it was about a quarter of the total company. Oh, wow. and, 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 and so when you're, when you're that large, you are in a lot of different businesses that are, they're all related, but, they're, but it's not like NTT is one thing. It's, it's, it's a global company with a lot of different legs. It sounds like. Yeah, that's very true. But again, my, my I personally just to, to avoid any confusion, right? I'm, I'm the CMO for it, what we call entity limited and we're bringing entity limited entity data together into roughly a $30 billion part of the larger enterprise. Right. And, the, and part of why we do that is because the international business, which I'm part of, is viewed as uh, one of the growth areas. And we have, you know, and in, in I joined NTT something like two, two and a half years ago. We integrated about roughly 30 companies that had been acquired over the years mm. into, you know, a, a globally integrated model. And now we're taking the the other part of the business and bring it all together. Um, and for those of you who've, who've ever worked for large companies, you know, I had a background, I worked for IBM at one point in my life. I had a chance to work for HCL. So very large IT companies. I worked for CA Technologies and in the telco space as well. The, these undertakings are not easy, right? You, 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 you try to expand globally. You try to be very customer centric. But at the same time, it's all about people and how do you align mm -hmm. people towards a, a common mission to do that. And we're in the midst of that. But for me personally, uh, it's a little bit kind of I, I enjoy doing that. And it's been really uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, not just interesting, but very personally rewarding as well. That's great. Well, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about your role. You have an interesting title because it's not just chief marketing officer, but it's also demand generation. And I know that there's inherent tension in some organizations between sales and marketing. You know, marketing's job is to say, well, you salespeople, why can't you close any of these good leads that we're generating? And you know, marketing says, you know, 
or, or marketing says to sales, why can't you close any of these great leads? You know, sales says to marketing, why can't you generate any amazing opportunities with, with a purchase order in hand? And so there's a natural tension between, you know, marketing and sales, but you also have demand gen as part of your title. So I'm curious about your role within the organization. Yeah, and uh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you kind of follow my background, uh, you know, I remember many years ago when I when I worked for, for IBM and IBM at the time, you know, um, you know, acquired Unica and we started to change what became known as demand generation performance marketing as far back as 2010. I happened to be fortunate enough to be at the forefront of that very early on. It has to do with inbound marketing, digital marketing, alignment of your LDR, BDR functions with sales, you know, thinking of marketing and sales, not as, as two in quotes, yes, they're separate, you know, departments, but from a customer perspective, you think of it more as an end to end lead flow, right? From a, opportunity identification to some level of progression to becoming a sales qualified lead to all the way through. And so when I interviewed for for uh, this position and, you know, our CEO, Abhishek, who's a long term McKinsey consultant, senior partner who joined as well, um, he basically said, look, Matt, your your background seems to be perfect for what I'm looking for. You know, can we can we build a closer alignment between marketing and sales? Do you have a background? And I do in in, you know, account based marketing or account based management. How do we think about pipeline management end to end? Can we do uh, up, up, you know, upskill, upgrade our website as a front end of the demand gen engine where people invariably, particularly since COVID also, come and look at your company what kind of capabilities do you have do you have endorsements on the analyst side do you have customer wins and so forth so for me personally i've been doing this for a long time since my ibm days and across various companies and i'd like to think we you know besides building a globally integrated marketing function i'm i'm quite proud of of some of the progress we've made here at ntt as well you know, you, you always aspire to, to, to do better, so to speak. But I, I like to think that the marketing function at NTT, where I am, has a, a, a seat at the table. So I report to the CEO, I'm part of the senior leadership team, and we are um, fully aligned with our sales teams. And it's a partnership. It's a collaborative mm -hmm. partnership with the intent to, to drive growth, right? Yep. Well, I found that when sales and marketing can agree on a common definition of quality in terms of leads and prospects and, and the flow of the opportunity from initial interest all the way through to I'm ready to sign, you know, uh, an agreement that it works well together when there's when there's alignment across that whole path, that whole journey from uh, I can talk about B2B. For, I, I spent years and years doing B2B lead gen and, and, and marketing. And so I, I love this space, but we'll move on. But I, I do, I think that you hit on something key, which is that, you know, when, when there's alignment across that whole journey from initial interest all the way through to, to closure, then marketing and sales can work nicely together. You just have to have that alignment. Right. You just add one thing on that, right? So. I, I think, you know, if you then also build, we completely integrated the MarTech stack, right? So mm -hmm. we have a, a MarTech stack that is 100% aligned with our CRM system. So, and, and we've simplified the MarTech stack from an integration perspective where our IT department played a huge role as well. Uh, you know, to me, the point is it, it, it has to be a collaborative effort and you frankly speaking you know as marketeers we sometimes get enamored with the creative aspects of a brand initiative or how cool our you know campaigns are and all of that is great but if you at the end of the day also create a mindset that you know what are we actually really having an in-market impact and creating an interest in our company 
that then can translate into a lead that then can be followed up by somewhat a human person who's a salesperson. And if you start that dialogue and kind of maintain the purity of marketing as part of your marketing function, but still speak the lingo lingo and, you know, uh, you know, get invited by sales as we do in our, for example, our ABM efforts, that takes a little while too. I don't want to mislead anybody that you just wake up one day and <laughs> you, kinda, you know turn that magical light magically switch. kumbaya between. Kumbaya, that's them, not right. exactly how it works. It takes a little bit of time. <laughs> it takes a little bit getting to know each other. It takes a little bit of trust. It takes you know also a give and take on a whole range of things. And and I for one again, I'm, I feel uh, very encouraged where we are, but still more work to be done. Yeah. Well, so I want to talk very briefly about your career path and journey because uh, we, you touched on it already a little bit about some of the stops you've made along the way. But I think you graduated from undergrad with a marketing degree from University of Linz in Austria, and then you ended up at, at, um, in Atlanta at Emory University to get your MBA. And I know you did a stint at UPS and then IBM and a couple of others. So just tell us quickly about the career arc that led to this, this role. Yeah, I... Uh... Again, for anybody, and I know you, you Joe, are in Atlanta, Georgia. I, I was yeah. very fortunate. I had a chance. You know, I, I first came to the U.S. when I was 16 years old, playing tennis, actually. Mm. And I fell in love. It took me 24 hours or less than 48 hours to say, at one point, I need to be in this country. And I was in New York at the time, right? And a few years later, I had an opportunity to go to the U.S., get my master's degree, was fortunate enough to to go to Atlanta right before the Olympics came in '94, mm. um, and then you know kind of charted my path. Got started at UPS and moved to the Northeast a few years later, and had a fantastic career at IBM, where I kind of uh, I would like to say uh, got exposed to end-to-end -end marketing efforts from brand marketing to what we today call demand gen to product marketing to field marketing and so forth. And at some point about 10 years ago, I had to make a decision whether, you know, and I say this jokingly, I have a great memory of my IBM days, whether I'll be a lifer at IBM or I'll take my skills on the road, so to speak. And, yeah. you know, since then I've been a CMO for a telco windstream. I was very, again, very fortunate. That was a big step. I, I became the global CMO for HCL Technologies. For those of you who don't know HCL, it's today, you may have heard of Wipro. It's a company that is bigger than Wipro today. When I joined, it was five and a half billion. Today, it's about 12 billion. Worked there for a while, then went to CA, then made a little switch into cybersecurity. Used to be computer associates back in the day. Yes, and, exactly. Right, I was right. there for a short amount. Time. Based in Islandia, New York, uh, on exactly Long Island. Exactly right, yeah. Islandia, yeah. New York, and yeah. um, and so I personally have been very fortunate to have had over the years end-to-end -end experience. So as I tell the teams that I'm, you know, privileged to lead today, when it comes to marketing, there is almost there is practically no functional area that I haven't either personally performed or led at some point in my something like 30 years of doing so. And so, you know, if this lends itself to a brand conversation, trust me, I, I know a thing or two about branding. If you want to get into a deep conversation about SEO, SEM or digital, you know, I've done some of that. The importance of positioning value propositions, which I think is super important in the B2B space, spent quite some time. Uh, demand gen or the Martech stack, like you and I could probably have a conversation for an mm -hmm. hour about what, how do you optimize your Martech stack and do you do best in class individual, you know, tools versus the integrate. I, I, you know, I, again, I've been, been there. Yep. To do that, yep. Right. So, yep. so, and, and what this has, what it has lent itself to is, you know, I'm, I'm now entrusted to lead fairly large scale global teams in pretty large, iconic companies, so to speak. Uh, I've also been super fortunate with uh, some great mentors along the way who have helped me out through my career, because as I always remind others, you know, everybody needs a little help along the way. If And for everybody out there who may listen to this, if you 
aspire to be a CMO one day. Uh, you know, our, our functional areas continue to change, in my view, at such a rapid pace that continuous learning in all yeah. aspects is absolutely required. And frankly speaking, the second you believe you know it all is the second you've lost. <laughs> yeah. And anybody well, who tells me, I know, I'm like, yeah, you know, we, we know. Well, so, so I was going to ask you the question about if, if there's a piece of advice you would give to a young marketer, or maybe one that you would give to yourself, you know, early in your career, if you could. And is that it, it Focus on the continuing learning part of it? Or is it something else? Uh, to me, to me, yes. But I, I'd probably um, maybe frame it slightly differently. So, and, you know, when I go back and when I graduated, I, I found in, in retrospect that I'm inherently curious about things. And, mm -hmm. and my advice would be, you know, if you truly want to be uh, a established marketeer, there are many career paths within that. But if you'd like to do it end to end and someday maybe be a CMO, you, you probably have to cross a certain level of the creative or the arts part. Then there is increasingly the science or the math part that yeah. you actually need to master. And then, frankly speaking, you know, you also need to be somewhat technology savvy. Yeah. Like, and, and if you think of that, and then I'm a big believer in what I call back to the future, the best book, and I have it right, you know, where I look over in my home office today, um, you know, go back to, for those of you who haven't read Kotler, the, 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 the basics of marketing management, there is a lot in there that applies to this day about positioning value propositions, your customer centricity, things of that nature. And if you take that curiosity with a little bit of perseverance, I can't tell you, you know, if you think it's a straight path that's just going to lead from a desire to do to something that's usually not how it works out. Uh, and then maybe the last one, um, in my personal career, I've been, again, if I look back, every three to four or five years, there's always been this, this proverbial fork in the road. And there's always been... The easier job that's a little bit safer and then the one that was a little bit more challenging and the one that was maybe less clearly defined <laughs> I can honestly tell you i have not in every instance but in most instances i've taken the one that i viewed as to be a little bit more risky and a little bit more expanding in and that ultimately has served me very well yeah uh, I believe that everybody has a superpower and I, I don't know if yours is curiosity and tenacity or, or what your superpower is, but I'm curious what you feel your superpower is. I, I personally, and you know, I'll, I'll probably those uh, who've crossed, I've crossed paths with and those who've worked with me, I'd like to think that I'm a, uh, I'm a people person. I, I think that uh, I have, you know, knowledge. I'm a very good marketeer in its own right, but I, I'd like to think I'm, I'm, I'm best with people. And I found that particularly when you take on larger roles with, with very large multinational companies, you are only as good as your team. Yeah. And, and to me, I derive, you know, if I may personally, I'm, I derive a lot of, uh, uh, personal satisfaction also working with people. I mentor a lot of people. I try to give back. And um, I'm a, a sports coach in, in various areas, right? And so so to me, that's kind of the part. And, and what I say to people who I mentor also is, you know, there's a lot of people who give you a lot of advice of how you need to build your career and the cross-functional nature and this and that. Uh, I, I have a slightly different point of view. I think you need to find your passion and if you find your passion, like the, the people who are best in anything that they do, whether those are artists, whether that's in sports, whether that's in business, whether that's anywhere, are the ones who love what they do. Yeah. And if you find what you love, what you do, then this thing that we call work is 
actually much less work than work. It's actually something yeah. you, you want to do. And if you can do that and you can now help people in a corporate setting find that, that's probably, I don't know if that's a superpower, but it's kind of how I No, think. it's great. It's great. So I'm curious if there's some specific values that you either want to demonstrate as a leader or that you would maybe demand of people that are on your team, values in them. Um, I think um, super important. So I'm a big believer in in purpose-driven brands. I'm a big believer in actually, and I have to say, I, I don't just say that lightly. One of the uh, very nice things about NTT is NTT values a few things that are important to me. NTT actually cares. I've worked for many companies and I think NTT genuinely cares about the planet and technology for good mm. cares about creating a workplace that actually is here. You can, it's actually how we've termed it. Right. For me personally, um, look, I surround myself in, in life in general with, with people who are honest, who have a certain level of integrity and who, uh, uh, you know, the way maybe, conversationally is I think it's as important what you do is important but how you actually do that is maybe even more important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so how you treat people how you interact with people how you you find a certain level of levity in certain situations particularly when things you know I always kind of say if you, if you picture yourself, you're on, on, a, on a little boat and you're in the middle of a storm and everything, that's when you need this quiet, a certain quiet strength. And um, I think that's important. I think we, we sometimes, we, we can't lose sight that, you know, work is such a big part of our life that, you know, I'm not a believer that there is a work-life balance, for example. I think, I think, that is all one thing. And what's more important is how you conduct yourself in the workplace, in your personal life. And I try to do, you know, like everyone, we're human beings, right? And everybody makes a mistake here and there, but it's very important to me. So I appreciate yeah. actually the question. I have to say, I, I, it's, a, it's a really good question and thanks for asking it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, here at Setup, we help marketers thrive by connecting them with the best people and resources. And that usually means in practice that we're connecting brands or, or, or marketers with agencies that can support them. And so we're not a marketing agency. We're not on the client side, but we live in that space in between. And we think a lot about that relationship between agency and client, client and agency. So I'm just curious, either at NTT or maybe in a previous role, how do you generally like to work with marketing agencies? So I, I, it's it's a great question. I'm I'm gonna maybe expand it a, a little bit in the following sense, uh, and it goes back to what I said earlier. I happen to believe that marketing is so multidisciplinary, and at the same time so specialized <laughs> yeah. that, that the very second you believe as a CMO or someone who's entrusted with that function that you can go it alone, you're probably making a mistake mm -hmm. because the reality is across the entire skill set of what we're asked to do, you are probably going to be required to partner with someone. Mm -hmm. And that can be agencies, that can be other companies as well. I happen to think that there is essential. What I personally believe is you have to a little bit, depending on the size of the company and where you, how specialized you are, you have to think a little bit what's core and in-house skills that I have, and then what's maybe also core, but I can't retain or have that skill. Yeah. So for example, highly creative skills, if you're in B2B marketing, you may or may have a hard time to retain highly creative yeah, skills. Right. Super analytical skills, the data analysts, the data scientists, you know, you may have a hard time. Some truly hardcore MarTech skills, you may find them outside, you may have a hard time retaining them. 
Yeah. And in that context, what I've done, I've had the opportunity to do both. I've had the opportunity to work with the largest agencies in the world, you know, the the Dentsus, the Ogilvy's, the, yeah. you know, and I've had fantastic experiences. In the last few years, I have probably gone more with what I call trusted friends. Yeah. So we we will partner with a specialized ABM agency who has skills. We will partner with a couple of really strong MarTech agencies. We will probably partner with a smaller agency that has an unbelievable creative director who comes up with stuff that, you know, I know that, you know, we can do. Uh, but my, my basic feedback to everyone would be uh, agencies are your friend. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of how you work with them and where you deploy them. They are, in essence, um, an extension of your team. We have, for example, a very, we have a digital agency who helps us with all of our SEO, SEM efforts. We have, a, as I said, an ABM agency. And again, that's kind of the setup we, we, we do now. Uh, don't, my, I, anybody who tells me they can do everything in house. Yeah, right. I will kind of, I will kind of smile and say, okay, if, if you can share with me how you figured that one out, I'd love to learn more because I'm not sure yeah. I actually believe it, to be honest. Well, Matt, you bring up something that we, we developed an offering here at Setup called Marketing Ecosystem Consulting or Marketing Ecosystem Planning. And the reason we developed it is because often clients would come to us and ask the question, what is Nirvana look like from an ecosystem standpoint of my internal resources and my external partners? And the reality is that that Nirvana looks completely different for every company. There's no magical formula that says, here's who you should have in house and here's what you should outsource to an external partner. And so with this offering, what we do is we come in and, and survey and interview all of the key staff within the organization, but also we interview the partners and the, the, the customers of the marketing team to understand what that ideal ecosystem should look like. And then we give recommendations to a path that goes from where you sit today to what are some action steps that can get you closer to Nirvana. And uh, sometimes that identifies gaps in the team uh, that are missing. Sometimes it identifies gaps in the external partners that are missing. And so it's been fun to do that kind of work because I agree. I mean, I'll be yeah. honest with you, Joe. I think, I think first of all, uh, kudos to you and your team that you're doing that. To me, the starting point for any marketeer is, I think you, you have to, you have to really wrestle with the idea of generalist versus specialist. Yeah, of course. And of course. Right. And if you are, if you are, let's say you're the CMO for entity, like entity limited, like I am, I obviously am entrusted to lead a large global team in that context. I think, or I feel very strongly that I need to have a certain level of highly specialized skills yeah. and that may be very different when, you know, I was the CMO for Force Point, $600 million company. It was very, it was probably more important that I had certain generalists who could cross yeah. multiple yeah. boundaries, right? And when you get into that and then you decide what you, what you want to have in-house, then that question of your ecosystem of partners and how you make them, because ultimately, and I think you'd probably agree, I hope is, Agencies are complementary. They're actually part of your yeah. team. They're yeah, not yeah, yeah. like they're, they're like I've had meetings or I still have meetings where I invite multiple. In fact, when I bring a new agency or a new partner in, one of the questions I always ask, and I go fairly senior, senior partner CEOs of, of those, and I say, how, how well do you play with other agencies? Yeah. Right. Because if if you as a team are like we only follow our process and, you know, well, no, it's a sandbox, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. And they're the we all need to be in the same sandbox and make it work. So kudos yeah. to you and the team. I think it's super important. Yeah, it's been it's been interesting work. And, and also once we finish that work, sometimes it leads to a client saying to us, by the way, we, we, we know you identified some holes or some gaps. Do you have some agencies, agencies that you can help us fill with those gaps and holes? 
So I'm curious if there's a specific, I got one more marketing question and then we have a couple for okay. fun to wrap things up. I'm curious if there's a specific program or a campaign, either at NTT or in one of your previous roles that taught you a great deal, either because it was a miserable failure. I mean, you learned a lesson that you needed to learn or it was a huge success and something that you would want to emulate again in the future if you could. So, so it's funny you say this. So I've been doing this for, I won't tell you exactly, but I, you know, I graduated in the early nineties. So I've been doing this for a long time. And what, what I would say is over this, whatever, 30 years, there's been maybe four or five, what I call career years. And I can tell you the interesting thing on those career years, or those were not necessarily, those were the years where we had the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. And, and I will tell you a, a, a couple of them, which I'm still proud of. You know, when, when I was at IBM, at one point, we, I'm sure many of you heard when we launched Smarter Planet, where I was part of that team. Great. When I was at UPS, we repositioned UPS Germany end to end. A, a marketeer's dream, right? Mm -hmm. When I uh, was at, at HCL, we signed to this day a, a, a digital transformation partnership with Manchester United that led to a global, uh, uh, in ultimately, it was like a sponsorship deal, but it did things for our brand that you could not have even envisioned, right? Mm -hmm. When I think of what we've done here at, at NTT, I will tell you, we have within probably less than 18 months deployed a world-class account-based marketing program that's directly aligned with sales. In a, and we, we just got recognized by one of the, uh, you know, the companies everybody knows, a third-party agency. Uh, those are some of the parts, but I will tell you, um, they're far and in between. I've done many different yeah. campaigns, many different efforts, but if you really said, okay, Matt, and, and again, the one, the UPS one goes back to 93, 94. The IBM was 2008, right? The HCL one was 2015, Yeah. right? So these are like, there's, and there's probably a couple others, but so, you know, and sometimes what you do, the crazy thing is, it's not always, you don't necessarily always know when it happens, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You just try to do your best work and then you hope that you put it out in the world and hope that it has an impact that you intended. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up with a couple of fun things, kind of quick hitters. Uh, the first is, is there a sports team or a book or a quote or a band or a movie that really inspires you? And what is it about that? thing that so inspires you most. there's a there's two or three quotes that that i i always mention and i and i'll just recite all of them right <laughs> so so because i really like them one is goes back to the spartans that says the more you sweat in practice the less you bleed in battle oh that's great the second one and i don't know who to attribute it to is never accept no from someone who can't say yes Right. right. And the third one. And anybody is, who's ever been in sales has heard, heard that quote for sure. Right. Anybody's yeah. heard that. And the last yeah. one is a maybe a little bit provocative, but I actually have that right here when I look. Uh, you know, the so and so whispers, you cannot withstand the storm. And the warrior replies, I am the storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this gives you a little bit of insight also. You know, I'm a first generation immigrant. I came here when I was full time, when I was 23 years old with absolutely nothing. I've been, if you had told me when I was 15 years old that I would be entrusted to do what I do today, I would have laughed them out of the room. I would have mm -hmm. never thought it possible. And so it gives you a little bit of insight of who I am and how I think about things as well. Yep. So I'm curious outside of your family, if where you find joy, is there some hobby or something that you? Love. There's a couple of things. One is, um, and I am trying to live this now. I think we live in a in a fascinating planet. So I derive enormous satisfaction from from traveling and going to different places. Just this last mm -hmm. week, I had a chance to be on a leadership meeting in Australia. It's for those of you in the U.S. who have not been 
uh, on those who have been. It's wonderful, but it's very far. So I love to see different places, different cultures. I also derive a lot of uh, personal fun and, and always strength. Uh, I played very competitive tennis in my day. Mm -hmm. I'm a nationally certified uh, youth soccer coach. So mm -hmm. I, I could, if this, if this gig, as I like to jokingly say, if this gig doesn't work out, uh, high school or even a college could credibly hire me and I have the credentials to coach and know the sport well enough. Cool. And then, so those are a couple of things that actually inspired me all the time. Nice. Well, uh, I, I want to wrap things up. I want to say thank you so much. Matt Pressurn is the Chief Marketing and Demand Generation Officer for NTT. Thanks, Matt. This has been such a joy to have this conversation. Thank you, Joe. That was really enjoyable. And thank you. Some great, great questions. I really enjoyed the dialogue. Thank you.